Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. On this program, we have two very special guests, one all the way from Israel. We're going to talk about a therapeutic writing center and a bomb shelter helping children stay safe in the nation of Israel and how you can get involved in foster care as well. So we'll be right back. Hey, welcome to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. I'm your host, Perry Black, and we have two very special guests on this show, and we're going to be talking about Israel, and I'm pretty excited about that, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> so rather than me messing up your names, I'm going to give you all the privilege of introducing yourself to me and our viewing audience. So first, we'll go with Reagan. I'm Reagan Weil, um, originally from Corpus Christi, Texas. I reside now in Austin. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having now, us. Now, you do know in Texas, there's only two Texas. That's Texas, and then there's Austin. Did you know about that? I, I've heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. And it's changed over <clears throat> yeah. my time. And your lovely guest is? I'm Eva. My last name is Lang. Ava Lang. Both German names, actually. So are you from Corpus Christi? No, no, no. Unfortunately, no. I'm from Holland originally, from but Holland. I live in Israel, in Elat, all the way down south. And where were you born? Where were you raised? Uh, in Leiden. Try to pronounce that. I can't even do your last <laughs> name. So where? Leiden. Leiden. Yes, it's in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands? Yes. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about you. You grew up, you were born in Holland. Yes. Grew up where? In Holland. In Holland. Yeah. And then did you go to uh, university? Yes, I did, in and, Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. That's yeah. a beautiful part of the world over there. Yes, and it's easier to pronounce than later. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> and I need all the help I can get. Now, I was in the Army in Germany, ah. and a lot of times, a lot of the guys in, in the military would take leave. They'd go up to Holland and into Amsterdam, that, yeah. that area. I never quite made it up there. I guess it was up there. Is that up there from Germany? Uh, depending on where you are, Germany is quite big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, tell, tell me a little bit how you got involved in, uh, in Israel. Um, well, uh, I used to go on holiday there a lot. My parents used to take me almost every year. And we'll go, we would go all over the country. And um, when I was older, I was working as a freelance communication advisor. So I would have quite some time off between assignments. Yeah. And I would love to go to a nice warm country in winter. And so Israel's nice and warm during the winter? Uh, in the south, yes. It's, yeah. it's all desert, like Texas in a way. Yeah. And it's really warm, even in winter. Now, when you say holiday, remember, we're talking to an American audience. Holiday to me would be like, what we just had recently, which is Thanksgiving, that's one day. Yeah, but, but I was holiday to Europeans, that might be more than one day. I was <laughs> freelancing, so yeah. I would go from company to company, and in between these assignments, it could be like I didn't work for a month or two months. Oh, so you would have a holiday, or what yeah. we would call a vacation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yes, yeah, it was like a period without work, because I was looking for the next assignment. And so how did you uh, eventually end up in Israel, and since this show is really about fostering, mentoring, and adopting children mm -hmm. in care, our special needs among children, how did you get involved in Israel? Why Israel and a writing ministry, a, a program reaching out to children? Well, um, I always loved horses, and I moved to Israel. I made Aliyah, and I became an Israeli citizen. And, and when did you do that? Um, in 2017. Okay. Yeah, and then I was looking for work, and before that, actually, a friend of mine took me horseback riding in the center, because as a tourist, you can go there, and you can, like, rent a horse, you get a riding lesson, and we did that, and I asked the person in charge, his name is Rafi, he's one of our founders, to, um, if he had any jobs available, and he said, no, we're just looking for volunteers, so I said, that's too bad, and then later, like, I don't know, maybe a year or a year and a half later, one of my friends said, do you know that there's a job available at the Therapeutic Writing Center in Kibbutz Kofit? I said, no, I didn't. And his wife was working together with Rafi's wife. 
And that's how, in the end, I got the job. I did two interviews and um, landed me the job. At the Therapeutic Writing Center. Yes, now, How is. long has that been around? Uh, it started in 1997. So quite so a while. about 25 years. Yes. Is that right? Did I do my math? Yeah. <laughs> Almost 25. Almost, yeah. And what is, the, what is the mission or the purpose of the Therapeutic Writing Center? Well, it was started, it was founded actually, because we're situated in the south of Israel. And it's very secluded. There's nothing around there. There's one big city, which is called Elat, which has around 60,000 inhabitants. Mm -hmm. But back then, there were far less, maybe it was, I don't know, 25,000, maybe 30,000. And there were no facilities for children with special needs. Yeah. So if there would be a family who got a newborn with special needs like autism or mm. CP or learning disabilities, they had to relocate to the center, to Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, or to the north, to Haifa. So did they, did they live at the center? Uh, no, no. Most of them live either in Elat or in one of the kibbutzim around Khafiz. Now when you say a kibbutz? Kibbutz. Kibbutz. Yes. Tell our audience what is that? Um, it's like uh, a bunch of people living together and sharing everything. Um, they got started, it was very like socialistic. And they would share breakfast, they would share dinner, they would all uh, work in the kibbutz. And it's like an independent village. So you share your income. Grow their own food. Grow their own yeah. food, maybe export. Like one of the kibbutzim is called Yotfata. They're very famous for their milk. So they have yogurt, milk, wow. and they export it. And that's what they live on. The kibbutz I'm working with, um, they have dates. So they have a lot of palm trees with dates and they have a plastic factory. Mm, very cool. Yes. Now, how many children attend the writing center? Uh, normal days, it's over 200 a week. 200 a week? Yes, so that's quite and a lot. And what did they do there? Obviously, they ride horses. Yes, they get uh, therapy. Uh, depending on what they need, but they all also do little chores around the farm. So they help with the horses, they help with getting everything tidy, um, maybe they plant something, whatever gives them a good feeling and get something done. And you find working with the animals, some of the children, especially those with autism, that's very mm -hmm. therapeutic, and helps them in some some yeah, words. yes, because if you work with horses, it's far more easy to communicate. Yeah. With a person, you need to speak. Yeah. And some of our children, they're not able to speak. Yeah. But with a horse, you can do everything with directing your feelings towards the horse and just doing it with your hands or your feet. Yeah. So it's easier to communicate. Well, my daughter raised horses, so I did too, so I know a little bit about horses. Now, some people are probably watching, wondering about Reagan. Who is he and what's he doing here? So we're going to take a brief break, come back, and find out a little bit about Reagan. So we'll be right back. A mission field around you is filled with young hearts needing a forever family. And at Second Chance Youth Ranch, our team is committed to providing healthy, stable, loving homes and families to hurting children in the Arkansas foster care system and those up for adoption. Please contact us if you feel the tug at your heart to help foster or adopt and find out the steps you could take to help fulfill a child's lifelong dream. Maybe you can't foster or adopt, but you could help. The need for thousands of children in the system is staggering. But with the help of faithful partners and business alliances, we are meeting those needs right now. Would you help us make a difference? Every gift, regardless of size, impacts a child's life directly and helps provide for a home in the gap right now. Visit the Second Chance Youth Ranch website at 2CYR.org to read more, watch the stories, and to make a contribution for a hurting child's care. Monthly partners are needed, so please contact us right away. And as you partner with this ministry, you are partnering with the Heavenly Father that has promised to be Father to the fatherless. God bless you for helping Second Chance Youth Ranch. Hey, welcome back. I know on this show, these brief breaks inspire you to get involved and engaged in helping bring solutions to children in waiting fostering and adopting and mentoring. There are 349 children in the state of Arkansas looking for an adoptive family, what we call a forever family. 
And if you, someone in your synagogue or church, would reach out to us here at Second Chance Youth Ranch, we'd love to give you more information on how we can assist you in changing the life of children in waiting, one heart, one life at a time. And by doing that, we can literally change the world. So on this program, we are blessed to have two very special guests, Reagan Weil and Ava Lang. How'd that do this time? <laughs> Good. <laughs> And Ava is, was born in Holland. She lives in Israel. And Reagan is from Corpus Christi, Texas, now living, Lord, let's pray for him. <laughs> He's living now in Austin, Texas. And actually, I went to Bible college in Texas. My oldest daughter was born there. She currently lives in Texarkana, Texas. So I love Texas. And I've been to Corpus Christi. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful town. A lot of German heritage there. I was there many years ago, as I told you earlier, and I had me a Jaeger schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> I love German food. Uh, a little kartoffel, some potatoes, uh, or some home fries is what we call them. Uh, but Reagan, tell me a little bit about you. Well, uh, as you say, I'm a, originally from Corpus Christi, Texas. I was um, one of uh, two Jewish kids in my school growing up in the body of Christ, Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah. When I was 16 years old, I visited Israel for the first time uh, on a summer uh, tour with uh, some other teenagers. Want to explain why a 16-year-old decides to go to Israel from so, Texas? So it's a, it's a very valid question. And our synagogue um, offered a scholarship each year um, for a student to go, full expenses paid. Wow. As I said, I was one of two kids, yeah. and I was the only one to apply. Yeah. <laughs> so I got the scholarship. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So now, in, when I read your bio, it says that your father is Jewish and your mother is Christian. That's correct. Is that still the still? Still the case. Yeah. And you, for whatever reason, explain this to me as a Protestant. You were one of two Jewish students and you went to Israel, right? Right. So, Is um, that a personal choice or is that something in the Jewish home that is pretty predominant? Um, I, not from where I grew up. Yeah. You know, um, the more densely populated uh, Jewish communities in the United States have all sorts of programs yeah. um, to send their kids to Israel so that they can um, can feel that Zionist spirit. Um, I went as a teenager not having any clue what I was about cool to trip. experience. <laughs> yeah, it was a trip across the world, and yeah. and, and um, but it, it it absolutely set the course for my life. Um, Tell me, as a young Jewish guy, 16 years old, to step foot in Israel. I'm gonna try not to cry. Yeah. How did it impact you? I'll try not to cry as well. Um, I did not know what to expect. Um, when I got on the airplane, um, was the first time I met the other Jewish kids yeah. that I was going to be traveling with. And you I, felt like, I'm not the I, only one? I had, exactly. Yeah. I had never been around 35 other Jewish wow. kids before. Yeah. And when we touched down at Ben Gurion Airport, the entire plane erupted in applause wow. because we were home. And when we stepped out on the tarmac, I, I felt compelled as did some of my, my new friends. We literally bent down and, and kissed the tarmac. And um, it, it's a true feeling of coming home. Yeah. Did you, what was that feeling on the inside? Can you expound, can you explain that? As a young Jewish guy, to step on, what would you call that, the homeland? What, what do you call Israel? Um, it, I mean, such a heritage. Yeah, I, I, I do call it home. I mean, yeah. Israel is, is the, the, if the, the Jewish people were, were exiled for yeah. so long. Yeah, so, people without a country. Right, yeah. so when I was there it, the first time in 1994, the country, gosh, I can't do math, but uh, the country was only about 45 years old. Yeah. And um, so that makes it, what, 70 years old, yeah, give or take now, young. 72 years old. And it's still developing. 
um, we're still building it. And so for a Jewish kid or any Jewish person to be able to visit Israel, you feel at, at, at the same time the kinship to the history, the biblical history of your ancestors, but you also feel the excitement of building a country yeah. almost from the ground up. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking as I drove in today about Abram, mm -hmm. Abraham, uh, and your heritage goes back to what I read in Genesis chapter 12. Mm -hmm. To me, as a, as a Protestant believer, that's just, that's inspiring to me. Uh, Ava, what about you? Now, you moved to Israel. So in, in our discussions, I want you to clarify for me, if you, you two will, about Aliyah. Aliyah. Yes. And? It means to go up. It's a, it's a Hebrew uh, verb, and it means to go up. And it means that you're coming from any country uh, other than Israel, yeah. and you return home. And that's why you rise, because that's you're going right. home. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, the closest I can get to that is I was in Germany in the army, and I was overseas, and when I came home. But even sitting here today, I'm still trying to put in my own heart and mind the difference of me being an American coming home from military service to being Jewish coming home or coming up and you going for the first time at 16. I, I, I don't even think I can wrap my head around that <laughs> because to me, I, I just, I don't, even, I don't know how to put that into words and I'm pretty wordy. <laughs> so how was it for you when you first went, Ava, how were you when you first went to Israel? Probably a baby. A baby? Yeah. And you just did that with parents on yes. holiday? Yes, yes. Now this is a silly question. So are you Jewish? Yeah, both my parents, <laughs> yes. Kind of a dumb question, isn't it? No, it's okay. And for you to go, when you were old enough to realize this was your coming up, was there something special about that to you? Because you chose to actually become an Is Israeli citizen yes, and I did. to live there now. Yes. Yeah, it's very special. It's um, it's like there's no discrimination against Jews, which is very nice. Because it's your homeland. Yes, exactly. Home. Yeah, yeah, and it's coming from being a very small minority yeah. to being the majority. Wow. Which is a really nice feeling if yeah. you're used to having to be protected to go to the synagogue. Yeah. Or if you're going to a Jewish school, we have very big like walls and military and police. Now, and what country are you referring to? Holland. Holland. You yes. Had to, you had to have security. Yes, we always have security. So I don't think Americans get that. Oh, then you're lucky. Yeah. 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 So, uh, my timer's flashing, so I don't know exactly how much time we have left. Pretty much cut. So, uh, I want to come back here in just a moment and find out a little bit more about the Therapeutic Writing Center and give our audience an opportunity to get involved and engaged in how they can change the world for special needs children. So we'll be right back. Okay, לא מתקשר כל כך, דרך ההחלטה לבוא לפה ולהתחיל לרכב, גילינו מאיפה זה נובע לנו. גילינו שבכיתה ז' בבית ספר הישן הוא עבר חרם, לא פשוט. ולאט לאט מפגש אחרי מפגש, הוא והסוס הראשון שהיה לו, שזו הייתה סימבה מדהימה, יצרה... איזושהי התפתחות אה, עדינה וקטנה אה, ורצון שלו להמשיך עם התחום. הוא ביקש לעבור לסוס אחר, הוא רצה לאתגר את עצמו לפאפי, אם אני לא טועה, ושם נוצר אה, קשר אחר לחלוטין, שהילד התחיל להיפתח. כשאני אומרת להיפתח, זה לבוא לפה מרצון להקדים בחצי שעה קודם. וגם להיפתח בשטח, כאילו חוזרים הביתה ויוצאים ופוגשים אנשים, זה כן לספר מה הוא עושה, שזה לא היה. ובזכות כל 
התהליך ההדרגתי הזה, עברנו בית ספר, בזכותו, מהבקשה שלו לעבור לבית ספר חדש, שיודע להכיל אותו, וזה רק העצים אותו, כי הם באו לכאן כקבוצה לרכיבה, ו... והייתה בקשה ממנו להעלות את הרכיבה לשלוש פעמים בשבוע, שנראה לי הזוי, אבל אני לא אומרת לא. אני רואה אצלו שינוי משמעותי בתקשורת. ברצון לשתף, לא לפחד להגיד קשה לי. כל התקפי הזעם שהיו לנו נעלמו, ואיך אומרים, הסוסים האלה זה העוצמה לשנות את עצמך בעצם. הדבר הכי חשוב זה שהמקום הזה שנקרא חוות גופית זה לא חוות גופית, אלא זה בית. בית בשם חוות גופית מבחינתנו לא מחליפים אותו. וזה פשוט החוויה לבוא לפה, לראות את החיוך על הפנים, את הנצנוצים בעיניים והרצון להמשיך, להמשיך, וזה הביא אותו למצב שהוא מתעמל גם בפרטי, מאמן כושר ועושה את השטויות האלה, זה בית. ובית צריך לעזור לו לצמוח ולהראות לעולם שיש דבר אחד כזה בעולם. ואותו נשמור, ואנחנו כאן בשבילו. קודם כל תודה לכל מי שתרם ותורם לנו, ואנחנו נשמח שימשיכו לתמוך בנו ולתרום לנו כדי שנוכל לשמור על הבית הזה חי וקיים, ושכל הילדים שצריכים אותנו יוכלו לבוא ולהשתפר ולהיות אחר כך המדריכים הבאים במקום הזה. אהבתי לרכוב, ועזרו לי להמשיך עם זה. זה היה עושה לי טוב גם כשהיה קשה, וגם כשלא היה בא לי הייתי תמיד באה. נתינה, אהבה לסוסים, בליצור עם חברים קשר ולדבר. נשמח שתמשיכו לתרום ושהמקום הזה יתקיים. היי, ברוכים לבית. I know this show is touching you in a very special way. I, I feel the presence of God right here in the studio as we're talking about Israel. Because everyone in this studio right now, and there's probably five, seven, eight, I don't know, ten of us in here, uh, we all share the love for Israel. So, but on this show, I really want to talk about uh, just briefly the therapeutic center, the writing center, because we want people to support that. Yes. And what kind of needs does the center have? Well, um, what we do is we give um, therapeutic writing lessons to everybody that wants to get them. And um, it's partly insured. It's not here in the States, yeah. but our Kupat Khalim, which means healthcare system, supports it, but only for like 60%. Yeah. And there are quite some families that are not able to afford the therapy, and we give scholarships. And you have about 200 children per week. Yes, that which come is a lot. Center. Yeah, we have 26 horses to provide all that care. We have around five therapists. And anybody that's watching that doesn't know, horses need shoes every six they to eight weeks, like a woman. Yes. <laughs> they need shoes all they the need, time. They need food, and yeah. our food, because we're in such a secluded area, comes from the north, so everything needs to be like imported. Yeah. So everything is more um, um, expensive than if you're in a non-secluded area. So in addition to 40% of your, 60% of the needs of the children's covered through insurance, but 40% yes. is not. It's so that's not. through donors and giving, yes. correct? Yes, we give them scholarships and we, we have children come to us from a school for special needs yes. and they come with their whole class and they get therapy for three hours a week wow. and they do little chores on the farm yeah. and they get lessons we have a classroom and now what we want to do is one of the requirements is to have a bomb shelter yeah because unfortunately we're in Israel so sometimes there's war and yeah. that's one of the things that we need and um, we're now building one and that's also why we're raising money to build this bomb shelter. So in order to have the therapeutic riding center, you have to have a, a bomb shelter. Yes. Now some people watching, we're in tornado country here, they think of more of a, a tornado shelter, but y'all don't have tornadoes. We don't like have we tornadoes. Do. But y'all have, not until you have now. incoming. Yes, have, we have so rockets. The, so the government requires you to provide safety. Yes. So is that shelter, it has to be large enough to handle 200 
children plus staff. Well, they don't come all at once, yeah. but yeah, it needs to be big. And we also want to uh, have it like for more activities, so yeah. it can be a classroom as oh, well. Yeah, okay. So we can not Multi just use it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And you need what, $100, $1,000? What do you need? Um, well, to be, build it, we need a lot, but we already raised quite some funds and we now need another like $40,000 $40, to uh, get this project. And there's thousands and thousands of people watching this show. That's great. And if every one of those people just gave something, yeah, it would be supporting Israel and children, special needs children in Israel. Yes, there are children with autism, with CP, learning disabilities, yeah. emotional disabilities. A lot of different uh, people come to us and it's not just children, it's also adults. Yeah. So Reagan, why, why should people support Israel? Why should the church, Christians, why should we support, why should Americans support Israel? Well, um, Israel is, um, the United States' greatest ally Absolutely in is. the world. Um, obviously, it's surrounded surrounded by enemies. Um, the Therapeutic Writing Center is actually located on the Jordanian border. Wow. Um, and so this shelter is critical. Um, w when, when the sirens go off, they have 15 seconds to reach safety. Wow. And we're talking about people with some special needs that may not be able to move very quickly. Yeah. Um, I would like your audience to understand, Pastor Perry, that the Jewish and the Christian communities of Arkansas um, adopted this shelter three years ago wow. and committed a total of $150,000 to build this shelter. And we're only 40,000 We're 40,000 away. away. Um, we are almost there. And um, construction is uh, planned to begin on this shelter in January. Um, so by the time we sit together next year, yeah. hopefully, um, yeah. we'll be celebrating. It'll be done. That it's, it's completion. This show, this specific show is about Israel and the Therapeutic Writing Center and the tremendous need to provide safety and therapy for yes. children in need. And that's why this show is all about, all throughout this state, there are children who are in need and they're needing a home. They're needing someone to mentor them, foster them, adopt them. Second Chance Youth Ranch TV is on the air to let you know of all the needs, not only just in the state of Arkansas, but also in Israel. We're blessed to be a part of what y'all are doing through Commission Fields and Dr. Kathy Dorse. And uh, we have planted a seed to help just a little bit with that therapy center and with that, with that storm shelter. And we want you to be involved too. We'd love to hear from you right here at Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. So why don't you reach out and let us know how you can get involved in making a difference, not only in Arkansas, but in the wonderful nation of Israel because it's precious to the heart of God. We'll see you next time right here at Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. Bye-bye.